Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Let's go ahead on and we're going to pray. We're going to just share a little word today. I believe that we are in the right place at the right time. Amen. How you all doing today? Glory to God. It's a blessing to be able to share the word of God. It truly is a blessing. So I'm just going to give you the opportunity to join me. Amen. Those of you that's on Facebook, it would be great if you just say hello. Amen. Let me know that let me know that you're there. Amen. Whether you stay or not, just say hi. Glory to God. Amen. So we're just gonna talk about a little word today. Judy, how you doing? Glory to God. How you guys doing over there? Amen. Glory to God. So now, let's pray. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, glory to God, for this opportunity to come before you and your people to share the living word of God once again. Father, tonight, I pray, Father, for a spirit of of, of life. I pray for the spirit of life would accompany the word. Because it's in you that we live and move and have our being. And we thank you, Father, that you confirmed your word with signs following. Amen. We thank you, Lord God, for confirming your word with signs following. Because we know that's in your word. Everything that we have need of is provided. Because you said to seek first the kingdom of God and his rightness and all these things shall be added to us. So we know that God, as we, can, as we continue in your word, that your word will produce in our lives that which we're believing for. So Father, we thank you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. And we give you glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. How you all doing today? Jerry, how you doing today? Glory to God. You know, I wish that everyone that visited would, would just say hello just like you did, Jerry. If they would just say hello, they would, it'll, 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 it'll make me, that'll help me out a lot. Amen. Just, just, just because you just because you been there, you know. Amen. Glory to God. Anyway, we talk. We're gonna just have a little time in the Word today. That's what that's what I labeled it. Amen. Because you see, we're gonna be talking a little bit more about faith. Because faith sees the answer when. Hey, Janice, how you doing? God bless you, Janice Fisher. Yeah, how you doing? Amen. So we're gonna be talking a little bit about faith today. Because, see, faith sees the answer to whatever the situation that we are praying for, what we are believing for. And when we pray in faith, faith locates and brings the answer to our presence. Amen. It, it, it brings it into our presence so that we can experience that which we are believing for now. Amen. Amen. So now, as we get into the word today, I want you to release your faith with me. Release your faith with me. Amen. Because you believing for something 
and and the spirit of God is upon me to release that. Whew, glory to God. I feel the power of God. When I say that, it's just like a boom, a presence of God come down on me so strong when I say that. Amen. But the spirit of God is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach the living to the captive and recovering of sight to the blind and to set at liberty them that are bruised and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. So as we get into the word today, as we get into the word today, I want to encourage you because you see what you're believing for, your faith can bring it into your life. What you are believing for, your faith can bring it into your life. Amen. Whether you know it or not, faith will work if you will work faith. Faith will work if you will work faith. Amen. Just stay stay with the word of God. Amen. But why 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 are we talking about faith? Because faith is the area where Jesus walked in when he was in the earth. Amen. And when we're walking in faith, we are demonstrating the kingdom of God. When we're walking in faith, we are demonstrating the kingdom of God. How can I pray for someone and expect the results that it, that the people are expecting? If I don't have faith to believe that that it can really happen, I believe the word of God, and I believe that God can heal you. I believe that God can deliver you. I believe that God can set you free, no matter what the devil has done to discourage you. I believe that God can restore you. Amen. Some of you live in a lifestyle that you're really not even happy with, and it's all because you got discouraged and you feel like you was all alone. Amen. But I want you to know that you're not alone. You're not alone. Every time, every time that a person start out with God, amen, when you start out with God and then the enemy comes against you, don't you know that God has already made a way for you to escape? He's already made a way for you to escape. Many of the afflictions of the righteous, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivered them out of them all. Hallelujah. So whatever it is that you're going through, whatever it is that you're facing, whatever it is that the enemy is trying to lie to you concerning Amen. I want you to know that there is a way out because God said he will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. And you know, God is, he's going to always lead you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Remember what he said in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. Amen. He making me to lie down in green pasture. He restores my soul. He lead me in the path of righteousness for his name, for notice it, for his name's sake. Amen. For his name's sake, yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Amen. See, God is already, he's already know what you, where you're headed. And he's already, and notice what he said, he has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Amen. He has prepared a table before you in the presence of your enemy. Glory to God. So what is the thing that, that the devil is trying to do to, to discourage you? Amen. What is it, what is that that the devil tried to discourage you in? Is it is it your health? Amen. Is it your relationship? It is it in, in your finances? Amen. Is it uh is it in your your children? Amen. Your your husband or your wife? What is it that the devil is trying to discourage you in? It's time for you to it's time for you to acknowledge that great is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. And don't let the devil tell you a lie and then get and then get you to start believing it. Amen. So don't believe the lies of the devil because faith will bring you the answer. Amen. Faith will bring you the answer. That's why it's so important that we understand that God tells us in Mark chapter 11, verse number 22, Jesus told the disciples, he said unto them, he said, have faith in God. He said, have faith in God. Amen. So we got to, uh, he, that's a reason why he said to have faith in God. And remember on Sunday, we talked about on Sunday night, we talked about the just shall live by faith. Amen. That, that was a powerful message on Sunday night. Amen. The just shall live by faith. And, and then on top of that, we had people come to be prayed for. People with, uh, that the doctor has said that they had cancer. They came for prayer and they said the power of God hit them. Glory to God. And I'm saying, I'm waiting for them to go back to the doctor now and come back with a, a good report. Because I believe 
that the message that God has given me concerning your health and concerning your healing, that God expects for you to open up your heart to receive the promise. Amen. God wants you to receive the promise. Amen. Remember, when we're, when we're ministering healing, what we're doing? We're demonstrating the kingdom of God. We're demonstrating the kingdom of God. Amen. <clears throat> and that's what God wants us to do. He wants to demonstrate the kingdom. <laughs> Glory to God. That's right. Angels are all around. They're listening. But we have to demonstrate the kingdom of God. Amen. Glory to God. See now. And so now we see here that in the word of God, see, in the in the in the in this lesson that we're going to be talking about tonight, amen. We're going to, it's like a continuation on, on faith, what I what I started on on Sunday, amen. And and, and I think I, I ministered a little bit on faith on last week also, amen. But I want to just I want to just uh share this with you because you see, I want you to turn your turn your Bible to the book of Proverbs, chapter four, amen. Chapter, Proverbs chapter 4 See we have We have seen that Faith is not Hoping We will see that We would Because if you're just hoping You're going to miss out On the promise of God Amen If you just hope You're going to miss out On the promise of God Faith is not just hoping Faith The Bible said In Hebrews chapter 11 Verse number 1 Now faith is the substance Of things hoped for And the evidence Of things not seen Amen Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So now, so now, as we look in the book of Proverbs, Amen. Faith is faith is believing, Amen. Because if you can believe it, you can receive it. Faith is believing, Amen. That we have the answer now. Faith is believing that we have the answer now. What is it that you're believing for? Faith is believing that is mine now. That I have the answer now, Amen. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Amen. Now notice what he said. Notice it. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Well, how do they obtain a good report? By believing. By believing. Amen. By believing. But notice what it says. Notice what the Bible says in the book of uh, in the book of Hebrew chapter eleven, verse number six. In the book of Hebrew chapter eleven, verse number six, he said, "But without faith, it is impossible to please him." For he that come to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. So now in the book of Proverbs chapter four, look at verse number 20. He said, my son, attend to my words. Now, why do you think that God is wanting us to attend to his words? Remember what it said in Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by what? The word of God. Amen. The word of God. Faith cometh by hearing the word of God. Amen. See, if you don't hear the word of God, then no faith is being produced in your heart. If you want faith to be produced in your heart, then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. So now notice what he said in Proverbs chapter 4, again, verse number, verse number 20. My son... Attend to my words. Amen. Attend to my word. Hey, my words. Notice it's plural. There's an S on the end of that. My son, attend to my words. Amen. Then it goes on to say, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Amen. So God not only wants to pay attention to the word, but he wants to hear what he's saying in the word. Glory to God. He not just wants to pay attention to the word, but he wants to hear what he's saying in the word. Amen. Glory to God. Why is it so important that we hear what he's saying in the word? Because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we got to hear what he's saying in the word in order that faith can be produced in our hearts. Because the scripture said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. And so when we get to that point where we can hear what the Spirit of God is saying, then we know that we're in the right place that God can speak into our lives. Amen. Faith 
is faith is going to come forth like you've never experienced before. How is that going to happen? By attending to the words of God and paying attention to what God is saying in his word. In other words, allow it to go beyond your carnal thinking and allow it to enter into your heart. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. And how is faith, how, how do we, how is faith produced in us and through us? Is produced in our words. Amen. Faith is produced in our words. Remember the one with the issue of blood? She said, if I may but touch the hem of his clothes, I shall be whole. And then when she touched the hem of his clothes, it activated the anointing that was resting upon Jesus' life. And when she touched his garment, it's just like a, the power of God hit her like a like a, 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 a strike of lightning. Just zoom, hit her body so strong that she fell down to the ground. She fell down to the ground and then Jesus stopped in his track because he experienced, he experienced a power being drawn out of him. Amen. He experienced power leaving him. And so he said, somebody touched me. Amen. He said, somebody touched me. Then he looked at, he turned around to see who had done this thing. Amen. He turned around to see who had done this thing. And the woman, knowing that what was done in her, she fell down, glory to God, Alabama. God bless you, Paula Johnson. Amen. We turned around, we, and she turned around and saw what, who, who had done this thing. And, 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 he, and he told the woman, he said, your faith has made you whole. It wasn't, it wasn't just, it wasn't the touch only, but she applied her faith before, she applied her faith before. She, because she was rehearsing it. If I may but touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. She kept applying her faith. She kept, she kept uh, rehearsing what she was going to get. You see, because you see, what was she doing? She was activating her faith. How was she activating her faith? Through her words. Through her words. Amen. And then not only did she activate her faith through her words, because see, faith without works is dead. Amen. She not only activate her faith through her words, but then she acted upon her words. That's what caused the power of God to, to, to come out of Jesus into her and heal her body. Amen. Remember, she didn't touch him. She touched the clothes that he wore, that he had on. And the power of God ministered to her and set her free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God wants to set you free today. I don't know what your problem is. I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know what you're going through. But God wants you, God wants your faith to see the answer today. God wants your faith to see to see the answer. And faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Notice what again it says right here in Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20. He said, my son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. That's very, very powerful and it's very important. Because if you can, if you can hear what he's saying right there, and if you could honor that, what he just said, my friend, you're on your way to the next level. You're on your way up. Amen. You're on your way up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God bless you, Reeves. Amen. You, you're on your way up. Glory to God. Amen. So now, notice what, he's, notice what goes on and say. My son, incline, uh, attend to my words, incline thy ear to my saying. Now, notice what it says in verse number 21. He said, let them not depart from thine eyes. In other words, in other words, he's telling you, don't just look at it one time and expect to receive all that that, that you can receive from it. No, I want you to look at it continuously. I want you to focus on it every moment that you can without disturbing the, everything that's around you. What, the, what else you got to do? God wants you to pay attention to that word. Amen. He wants you to pay attention to the word because in the word is the source of life. Remember what he said in John chapter one, verse number 14. And the word became flesh. What happened? It came alive. It came alive. Amen. Glory to God. And dwelt among us. The word came alive. It dwelt among us. God wants the word to come alive in your heart. And it cannot come alive in your heart unless you allow it to. Because God is not going to 
make you do anything. He gives each and every one of us the opportunity to choose. Amen. He's not going to force his way on neither one of us. Amen. I remember before I got born again, before I got saved, they always, they, 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 I mean, people used to talk to me all the time about God. And it, 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 and it didn't happen for me until I was ready to accept it. Amen. God did not, even though people try to push it on you, try to push religion, try to push salvation, try to push uh, the uh, uh, new birth. Amen. But it never happened for me until I was ready for it to happen. And it's the same with you. Amen. Even with, the, even with healing, even with deliverance, even with uh, praying for finances. Amen. Until you allow the word to work in your heart and you yield to the word properly, that word is not going to work for you. You're just going to have a lot of word don't, and, and it's just, it just lying dormant in your heart. Just lying dormant in your heart. Amen. That's why we have to put faith to our words. We have to act upon our words. Faith without works is dead. Amen. Verse number 22 says, for they are, for that, for they, talking about his word, he's, for they, my words, are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. And health to all their flesh. Notice this scripture says, let them, let them, talking about my words, not depart from thine eyes. Many people fail to become, they fail to be, they fail because they see themselves failing. Many people fail because they see themselves failing. They don't see themselves being healed. They don't see themselves being delivered. They don't see themselves uh, 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 being touched by God. Amen. They, they, they think it. They read about it. But when it actually comes down to the point, you really don't believe that God can do it for you. Amen. You really don't believe that. And this is one reason why so many people struggle because they partly believe the word of God. In other words, they don't have faith in God. They don't have faith in God. Amen. But the word of God, God's word says himself, Jesus took our infirmity and bare our sicknesses. Amen. In Matthew chapter eight, verse number 17, Jesus said, he took our infirmity and bare our sicknesses. Glory to God. My God, there's an anointing resting upon me right now. Glory to God. And I want to release it right now upon you guys. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I release the impartations right now. Father, I share the I release it right now, Father, upon every heart under the sound of my voice. Touch your people right now, Father. I rebuke that spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease. And Father, I declare and decree divine health, divine health and healing. For healing is the children's bread. Glory to God. For healing is the children's bread. And I thank you for it, Father. I thank you for it, Father. Glory to God. Amen. So now, so now we see that we will see we will see ourselves well. That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to see ourselves well. He wants He wants us to see ourselves healed. Amen. Because as a man thinketh in his heart. According to the scripture says, so is he. If you think that you are healed, amen, if you receive your healing, if, if when I pray for you and you and you believe in your heart, you receive your healing, amen, then activate what you believe. Activate what you believe, amen. Share what you believe. Let the world know what you believe. Declare what you believe, amen. The woman said, if I may but touch but his clothes, I shall behold. What was she doing? She was declaring what she believed. She was confessing what she believed. She put voice to what she believed. She put voice to what she believed. I'm going to say it again. She put voice to what she believed. This is the key to taking us to stepping out in faith, putting voice to what you believe concerning the word of God. Amen. Once you put voice to the word of God, God has obligated himself far above and beyond his word. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So when you put voice to the word, you step right in the playground with God. Now it's just you and the Father. Amen. And he's watching over that word to perform it in your life. He's watching over that word to perform it in your life. Glory to God. Are you willing to take that 
word? Are you willing to take the word of God and, and allow that word to minister to your heart? Amen. Are you willing to take that word and, and allow God to, to, to just, just minister to your heart? Because that's what he want to do. That's what he want to do. Remember, faith coming how? By hearing. And hearing how? By the word of God. By the words of God. You got to hear the words of God. Amen. And then you got to understand what you're hearing concerning the word of God. Amen. Because when you get and, and, and get it and, and getting everything you need understanding. Amen. You need understanding. How can you receive the promise if you don't understand the word? Thank you. Glory to God. Yeah. The promise of God is lined up in his word. And when we can agree with the word of God, according to the word of God, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow what? Rivers of living water. Living water. Amen. The word of God will begin to produce the life and the nature of God right out of your spirit. Amen. That's why it's so important that we get the word of God in our heart. Notice what he said. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And I like this part because this part says a lot about the word of God. He said, and the word was God. And the word was God. Hallelujah. Amen. And the word was God. And then it says, as many as received him, to them gave he power. To them gave he power to become sons of God. Amen. To them gave he power to become sons of God. Amen. Glory to his name. So now, as we hear the word of God, as we take the word of God to heart, Lydia, how you doing? Amen. As we take the word of God to heart, amen, God will produce exactly what he said that he would do. Amen. He remember what Jesus said in, in uh, Acts chapter 10, verse number 38, how God anointed Jesus Christ of Jesus of Nazareth. He didn't say Christ, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all, who went about doing good and healing all. They were oppressed of the devil. You know what God calls sickness? God calls sickness depression. Amen. The spirit of depression come upon you when sickness is over you. The spirit of depression is working overtime on you. Amen. God wants you free from that spirit of oppression. He wants you walking in divine health. God wants you walking in divine health and healing. Healing is the children's bread. Healing is the children's bread. God wants you walking in divine health and healing. Amen. So let's 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 don't let, let let's don't let God down. Let's let's let our, let's let the word of God manifest on our behalf. Amen. So now, where were we at now? Where were we reading from? The book of Proverbs. Glory to God. I lost my scripture. Glory to God. Uh, I, well, I didn't lose it. It's still here in the Bible. I just got to turn back to it again. Amen. I just have to turn back to it. Amen. Because God wants us to understand this thing. Because see, how can we how can we how can we bring forth and uh, and declare the will of God if we are not understanding what God is saying to us? Amen. If we're not understanding what God is saying to us, we have to understand in order to preach, in order to to deliver the message. Amen. If we don't understand, how can we deliver the message? Remember, faith sees the answer. Faith sees the answer. Don't you want to see the answer? Then get into faith. Get into faith. Because faith sees the answer. Faith will unlock the hidden treasures of the word of God. Faith will unlock the hidden treasures of the word of God. Amen. And that's why it's so important that we, are, that we get into faith. Amen. Glory to his name. Now notice, he said, now, now, now notice what he said again right here in Matthew chapter 8 verse number 17 Amen Matthew chapter 8 verse number 17 Himself took our infirmities Now who took our infirmities? I'm just sharing a little I'm just I'm just sharing a little little word with you tonight I'm not I'm not really trying to preach I'm just trying to just share a little bit a word with you to encourage you Amen to believe the word of God That's all I just want you to learn, I just want you to believe the word of God 
I'm not trying to preach. I'm just trying to give you a little, a little, uh, share a little wisdom with you so that you can hear the word of God, believe the word of God, act upon the word of God, and let the word of God minister to your heart. Amen. So now, glory to God. So now if we are, if the word of God, if, if, if notice what he said, we will see our, if we, if we can, if we can pay attention to what he said right there in Matthew chapter eight, verse number 17, Amen. Himself took our infirmity and bare our sicknesses. Amen. In his own body. Notice what, notice what he said. And bear our sicknesses. If we look at our body and we see, if we can see ourselves healed, amen. Oh my God. That's that's a that's a that's a faith, that's a big old faith step right there. You might think this is a, such a you might think it's a great big step, but it's actually not a big step. It's just a it's just a step in the right direction. Because once you make that step in the right direction, God is going to uphold you and he's going to deliver you and he's going to make you free. For he that the son set free is free indeed. Amen. So now you should be able to see yourself well now. Amen. You should be able to see yourself well. Once you once you have heard the word of God and once you experience the anointing on the word of God, that means God is speaking to your heart. Receive that word, receive of that anointing and say, Father, I believe that I receive my healing now. You don't have to wait until I pray for you to receive your healing. The moment you begin to experience the anointing upon the word that I'm sharing with you, the moment you begin to experience the anointing, amen, that's the healing anointing right there. Just open up your heart, receive it and say, Father, I believe I receive my healing. Then lay your hand on your body, wherever the pain is at in your body, lay your hand on your body and say, in the name of Jesus, pain, I rebuke you. You get off my body now. By his stripes, I am healed. I am healed. Amen. Just, just take a bold step of faith. Amen. And lay your hand on that. Lay your hand right now on that area of sickness of your body. Amen. Lay your hand on your body where you are sick at. And then just speak to that thing. Just like the woman said, if I may but touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. You lay your hand on your body where it's sick at right now. And you just speak to that sickness that is in your body and command it to go. Remember what he said in Luke, excuse me, Mark chapter 16, verse number 18. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Amen. Then verse number 18, the latter part of verse number 18 says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. So if you are a believer, that's what, that's the requirement. You are a believer. And he's saying, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. Shall they cast out devil? They shall speak a new tongue. They shall take up serpent. If they drink any deadly thing, shall not hurt them. Then he said, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. So if he said that you can lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. He's talking to you. The word of God was sent to you. The word of God was sent to you so that you can activate the promise of God right now in your life. The word of God has the power within itself to bring about his own fulfillment when you believe it in your heart and declare it out of your mouth. Amen. God will produce. God will produce. Amen. And God will cause his word to become a living reality in your life. Why? Because he loves you and he wants you to experience his goodness. He wants you to experience his mercy. He wants you to experience his grace. Why? Because his grace is sufficient for us. His grace is sufficient for us. Amen. So he wants us to experience his goodness and his grace. Amen. So now, so now as we as we look at that now, notice notice also in verse number 22, amen, for for they are life, for my words are life in Proverbs chapter 4 verse 22. He said, "For my word are life is life." Blessing. That's right. Amen. Thank you for thank you for, for showing up. Amen. Amen. Hold on, uh, Twitter. Thank you for showing up. Amen. He said, for my words are life. Amen. My words are life. So when the words are life, when does the word come alive for you? The word come alive for you the moment you believe it. The moment you believe it. Amen. The word come alive in you. And as you as you Take that bow, stand upon that word, and just begin to declare, by his stripes, I am healed. Then just take a step further. Take a step further. Lay your hand on your body where the sickness is, is located and say, Father, 
By your stripes, I am healed. I receive my healing now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lay your hand on your body. Amen. Exactly where the pain is at, where the sickness is at, and rebuke that thing. Amen. Says, Father, you said, you, you said these signs shall follow them that believe in that in my name shall they cast out devil. Amen. Speak to that spirit of infirmity. Command it to get off your body. Command it to go. Amen. Command it to go. You foul spirit of infirmity. You foul spirit of sickness and disease. I rebuke you now. And I lay hands upon my body right now. I command you to leave my body now. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. And you have no power over my body. Amen. Amen. You have to you have to exercise divine authority. Sometimes you have to rebuke that devil off of you. Amen. And then you have to, and then if you if you did anything that, that caused that sickness to come upon you, then you have to repent from it. Amen. You have to repent from it. Amen. Sometimes you have to, sometimes you just have to repent for whatever. You may not even realize you did something. But if the enemy has afflicted you for for just for, for no reason off out of clear blue sky, sometimes you have to just examine your heart and find out, Lord. Where have I missed it at? What did I go? Where did I go wrong? What did I do to cause this to come upon me? Amen. And, and and if the Lord reveals something to you, now just go to say, just go to the Father, humble as a little child. Say, Father, I I see that. Father, forgive me. I didn't as an accident. I didn't mean to do that. I it was an accident. Father, I repent from it and I turn my I turn away from that from that direction and I turn my heart to you, Father. And as I have repented, you said. If I forgive, I shall be forgiven. Amen. So I forgive. So now I'm asking you to forgive me. And once he forgives you, now you say, Father, now that I'm forgiven, I receive my healing right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Get rid of that animosity. Get rid of that strife. Get it out of your life. Don't tolerate strife. Don't tolerate anger. Don't tolerate uh, bitterness in your heart toward people. Amen. Because people is not your problem. The devil is your problem. Those demons is your problem. Amen. People are not your problem. And when you deal with that demon spirit, you on your way up. Amen. You on your way up. Cast that devil out. Command that thing to go. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now notice what the, now notice this now. Notice, notice this. The Hebrew word translate health here. It's uh in uh, in verse number in verse number glory to God verse in verse number she tell all about code about say tell about key in verse number 22 proverb chapter 4 verse number 22 the hebrew word there for, for health the hebrew word there means medicine that that word health in 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 proverb chapter chapter 4 verse number 22 amen he said for they are for they talk about his words are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. That word health right there in verse number 22, amen, means medicine, medicine. That's why you need to meditate upon the word, amen. What is, why? Why are you going to meditate upon the word? Because it's releasing the spirit of life. He said, for my words, for, for is, 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 is life and health and healing to all your flesh, amen. Health, health. Is a help to all your flesh. Amen. Knows what it said right there in Proverbs chapter 4, verse number 20, verse number 22. For they, talking about his words, are life to those that find them and health. Health. Amen. The word is life and health. Life and health. Amen. To all your flesh. To all your flesh. Amen. He didn't say to your spirit. That some people, well, we are spirit beings. Yep. But he's not talking about the spirit right here. He's talking about your, he's talking about your physical body. He's talking about your physical body right here. He said, my word, my words are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Glory to God, to all their flesh. So we see here that God is talking about physical healing and not spiritual healing. He's talking about physical healing. Amen. Right here, verse number 22. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he said, for notice, 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 also, notice what he said here in verse number 22. For they, my words are life to those that find them. And then he said, and health to all their flesh, to all their flesh. Oh, hallelujah. What's up? Jesus, baby. Jesus, what's up? Glory to God. Thanks for asking. 
for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. The Hebrew word translated health right here is also translated as medicine. Medicine. Amen. Medicine. Glory to God. Medicine. Amen. And medicine is all in the word. It's all in the word of God. Because the word of God is full of God. It's full of the life. It's full of life. And it's full of God's medicine. Amen. It's full of life and full of God's medicine. Amen. Medicine has no, medicine had to be taken in order, according, according to a description in order for it to, uh, in order for it to uh, be activated in your life. Amen. In other words, you go to the doctor and you get a prescription and you find out, you, he found out that, that you, that you need some antibiotics and so forth and so on or whatever. Amen. And he said, I want you to take all this here till they all gone. Don't leave not one. Take them all, okay? Take them all till they're all gone. And I want you to take them at a certain time of the day. he tell you what time he wants you to take those antibiotics or whatever. Amen. He wants you to take them every day at that same time, whether with food or without food. He's going to give you instructions. Amen. Amen. But notice the Word of God is the same way. The Word of God is the same way because the Word of God is health. It's life and health and healing to all our flesh. Amen. The word of God is life, health, and healing to all our flesh. So when I look at this and I see what God is saying to me, I can see that God is concerned about my well-being. Amen. And this is why I refuse to allow sickness to, to, to maintain a stronghold in my body. Amen. I refuse to allow it. Amen. I refuse to lie. Well, you know you're going to get sick from something. You got to die from something. Well, I know I have to die from something. I don't have to die because I'm sick. Amen. And I ain't finna die right now. No way. Not today. Amen. Not today. Because I'm not ready. Are you ready? I'm not ready. I'm not, I'm not ready. I still got a lot of work to do here. Amen. I still have a lot of work to do here. So God wants us to look at the word as, the, as life. He wants to look at the word as life because his word is, is life and health and healing. Now notice what he said, to all our flesh. This is flesh right here. This is flesh. Amen. This is what he's talking about. To all our flesh. Glory to God. Many people pray, pray and pray, but they never see themselves with the answer because they're not operating from the standpoint of faith. They pray, oh God, oh, oh, and they begin to beg God. You don't have to beg God. Don't beg. Just get in faith. Amen. You don't have to beg God. Oh God, please, please, God. Oh God, please. No, no. That's not going to get anything done. You're not going to accomplish anything begging. The only thing you're going to do is find yourself frustrated. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Amen. Begging, the only thing you're going to do is find yourself frustrated. Amen. Why? Because you think that God should hear you just because you're begging him. No, God don't hear you because you're begging him. <laughs> no. That's not, that don't make God hear you because you're begging. Amen. That just gets you upset, get you frustrated. God moves on faith, not begging. Not begging. Amen. God moves on faith. So now, like I said, many people, they pray and pray, but they never see the answer. They never see themselves healed. They never see themselves delivered. Amen. They never see themselves getting any better. And then, now on, on top of that, they go to talking. They go, to, they go to talking against the word of God. They go to talking there. Well, I prayed this and I prayed that and I did what the preacher said, but I don't. it doesn't look like I'm getting any better at all. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Look like I just might as well lay on down and die. <laughs> what kind of communication is that? That's not that's not confessing the word. That's giving in to the that's giving in to the power of the enemy. Amen. That's giving in to the power of the enemy. See the thief, John 10:10 10, 10 said, but the thief come up for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. He said, But I come that you may have life and that you may have it more abundantly. Where is life at? Life is in the word. Life is in the word. Proverbs chapter two, chapter excuse me, Proverbs chapter four, verse number twenty-two. The life is in the word. Amen. For they are life to those that find them. Talk about the word. For they are life to those that find them, and help to all their flesh. Glory to God. Amen. So the life is in the word. 
And that's why it's so important, folks, that we begin to believe the word. That we begin to believe the word. The word has the ability to deliver you, to set you free from whatever that is that's ailing you. Amen. Remember what he said in Luke chapter 4, verse number eight, verse number 18 and 19. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captain and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty them that are bruised, and to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. God wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. God wants to do it. He wants to do it. God get pleasure out of ministering and, 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 and making his people happy. God get pleasure out of seeing his people happy. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So now, amen. Leon, how you doing? Leon Ellis. Glory to God. Good to see you. Glory to God. Amen. So now we see that God is dealing with the heart of people. When symptoms go to coming upon your body, oh, don't go to don't go telling everybody about your symptom. Amen. The only someone need to, you need to talk to when symptoms go to coming upon you is God. I, I, in the wintertime, in the wintertime, people all around me begin sick. And the people in my church, I mean, say for instance, now, now listen to this, folks. My mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, man of God, God bless you. God bless you too. Uh, yeah, amen. But my mother-in-law, this past uh, winter and, and just a few months ago, I mean, she got so sick. I mean, she got so sick and couldn't hardly walk, couldn't hardly talk. She was so sick. My wife tried to get her to go to the doctor and she said, no, no, I won't go. I won't. Just pray for me. Just pray for me. See, when she, she, she know what this anointing will do for her. My church is in Sacramento, California. Amen. 2701 Cottage Way, Sacramento, California, 95825. Amen. So God, God touched this woman. I mean, she couldn't hardly walk. She, she was in so, she was, I mean, she was just out of it. And and she's and my wife tried to get her to go to doctor. She said, "No, nope, I don't want to go to doctor. I want to go to doctor. I want to go to church. I want to go to church." Amen. And you believe me, this woman, she trusts the anointed. She trusts the anointed, and she came to church, and I preached a healing service just for her. <laughs> I did. I literally did. I preached a healing service just for her, and at the end of the service. The anointing of healing was upon me, and I laid my hand upon this dear sister, amen, 72 year old, amen. I laid my hand upon her, and the power of God hit this woman, amen. And the very next, the very 30, about the next hour or 30 minutes or so from that point, she began, I mean, she began to get better and better and better. And I seen her today, she's just like nothing that ever happened to her. I'm telling you. The anointing that rests upon this ministry will work for you when you believe it. Amen. There's a lady that comes to our church on Sunday. Amen. Because she heard about our healing services. She come to the church. She had cancer in her body. Amen. And, and at the end of the service, I, and on Sunday I was talking about, I was talking about uh, uh, the just shall live by faith. That's what I talked about on, on Sunday night. And so this dear sister, she was, she, she, these, it was, these women, they all came in there together. Amen. And, and they listened to the word of God. They received the word of God. Amen. God ministered to their hearts. Amen. And at the end, that's when I found out that she had cancer. Amen. And she wanted me to pray. She came up there and stood in front of me and the power of God just fell on this woman. Just started, just started dealing with her heart. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. It was so powerful. Amen. Now, I said, now, I said, what happened to you after, when I, when I, and after I laid my hand upon you, anointed you with Lord, and after I, after I laid my hand upon you, I said, what happened to you? She said that the power of God 
was so strong upon her that she don't, she said, I just couldn't hardly stand up. It was so strong on me. I said, now I'm a, I want you to go back. When you go back to the doctor, I want to hear what the doctor has to say about this, this, uh, this cancer that you spoke of earlier. Amen. Because I believe it's gone. I believe it's gone, folks. I believe it's gone. Amen. I believe that she is walking in divine health. Looking for a church in Sacramento? I'm in Sacramento. Amen. I'm in Sacramento. Come on down. Come on down and join us. Glory to God. Go to my website, LarryBurgerMinistries.com. Amen. You'll see the flyer that shows you my, my, my church address. Glory to God. Amen. How you doing there? Uh, glory to God. Good to see you. Amen. Glory to God. Praise them. Praise God. Amen. The body are... That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. Praise God. The body are the answer. No, the faith is the answer. Faith is the answer. Glory to God. Faith is the answer. And faith sees the answer. Faith can cause that problem to go away. Faith can cause that healing to manifest with just the twinkling of an eye. Amen. God will do in an instant what it will take a natural doctor years and months to accomplish. Amen. Remember last year this time when I had my yearly physical, the doctor told me, he said, sir, I got some good news and I got some bad news. He said, the, the good news is that you're still alive. And I said, great. I said, what the bad news is? He said, he said the bad news is that you got cancer. That's what he told me. And, and, and I didn't tell no one about that, what the doctor told me, until I went back to the doctor after two months and a half, three months was old. I went back to the doctor after spending time with my father. Amen. And I went back to the doctor for, to take my final checkup so they can see what the progress of this cancer that they found. And he said, sir, I know what I saw. I know what I know what I saw. He said, but for some reason or other, it's not here no more. It's gone. It's gone. Amen. And 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 I said, praise God. That's now see, that's what I'm talking about, folks. You got to learn how to stand on the word. Remember, faith is in the word. Faith is in the word. Remember how faith comes? Faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the words of God. Amen. And what he said in the book of Proverbs, in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse number 20, he said, My son, attend to my words. Attend to my words. Amen. And then he says, Incline thy ear to my saying. See, God just doesn't want us to read the word or to just hear the word. He wants us to understand what the word is actually saying to us. Because you see, without an understanding, you don't have. You don't have the, uh, the, 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 the you don't have the, the the ability to produce faith if you don't understand it, Amen. Because faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That means I got to understand what I'm hearing. Because a lot of people say, "Well, I I I I want to I, I I come to church and I want to be healed," but then they don't prepare themselves. They don't allow themselves to receive. The word, they just want to hear me preach, then they expect it to happen just like that. I'm not the healer. He works in me and through me. Amen. Jesus is the healer. So when you come to church for healing, remember, I'm just a man. But if you come to Jesus, oh, he'll accept you just as you are. Amen. But in the process, he's not that he don't expect for you to, to stay as you are. When you come to him as you are, he expects you to change. <laughs> yes. He expects you to change. He don't want you to stay as you are, even though you come as you are. He expects you to change. And that's when we come to that place of acknowledging. God, your word declares it. I believe it. And that sells it. Amen. And then, you, then you, just, you just apply the word of God to your life, to your heart. You lay your hand on your body. Amen. And you pray and you rebuke that devil off of you. Amen. You command that body to be to be healed. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Because Jesus, he said in the book of Isaiah, 
chapter 53 says, Surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows, yet we esteem him, stricken men of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. We are healed. Amen. So it, does, it doesn't matter who you are. What matters is what you believe concerning the word of God. That's what matters. Amen. Who you are doesn't matter. What you believe, that's what matters. Amen. That's what matters. If you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God and you believe he died for your sin. Amen. You believe he took those stripes upon his back for your healing. Amen. If you can believe that, folks, you're on, you on your way to your next level. You on your way up. Glory to God. Glory to God. And so now we don't want we don't want that contradictory faith. Amen. We want our faith to be precise. We want to stand upon the word. Amen. We want to stand upon the word. Amen. That's a lot of that's a lot. That's a lot we could say. Amen. But a lot of things that I could say, if it's not going to produce faith, then why say it? I want to say only those things that will produce faith because faith is now. Faith is now. Amen. You need your healing now. You need your deliverance now. You need your peace return now. Amen. You need it now. You don't want to wait till later to get it. You want it now. Amen. Get your mind on the answer. When, you, when you're reading the word of God, when you're praying, when you're praying, amen, get your mind on the answer. Don't keep looking at the problem. You keep looking at the problem, you're going to keep talking about the problem. Get your eyes on the answer. Amen. Get your eyes on the answer. What do you mean get your eyes on the answer? Find the scriptures pertaining to divine health and healing or whatever you have need of. And you focus on that scripture. You meditate upon that scripture. You allow that word to penetrate your heart. Amen. And you allow that word to come to be a living reality. Meditate upon that word. Let the word get into your spirit. Let the word be transformed in your, in your, in your life, in your heart. The word will become flesh. It's going to begin to produce life and health and healing to all your flesh. Amen. The moment the word becomes flesh, it's going to begin to produce the life and the nature of God to all your flesh. It's going to begin to drive out that sickness. It's going to begin to drive it out of your body. That's what you really want. You want to drive it right out of your body. Hallelujah. My time is about up. I have been with you guys for a whole hour sharing with you. Amen. So let's pray. Glory to God. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift these people up before you, Father. And Father, I pray that they can see their answer through faith in your word. That they would not complain and talk about the problem, but they will look to the answer and declare what your word says and receive the answer as done. Receive their request as done. Because as we can see it, we know that we can have it. So, Father, I bless your people. I release that anointing right now. Receive your healing now in Jesus' name. Lay your hand on your body right now where the pain is at. Receive your healing right now in Jesus' name. Father, I bless your people. And I give you glory and praise for them right now in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you guys. I've enjoyed sharing with you this hour. Amen. Thank you for joining me for a time in the Word. We'll come back and we're going to do it again on a later day. We love you. God bless you. Until the next time, have a blessed day in Jesus Christ. Remember, Jesus Christ is the healer. Regardless of who's preaching, Jesus is always going to be the healer. You have to expect that. You have to receive that. God bless you. Bye-bye.